Welcome back to the Ingredients for Success podcast. I'm your host, David Hoover. Today, our guest is Todd Pauli. Todd is the founder and publisher of Move Nutrition Network, an online destination that connects the sports and active nutrition industry. Move Nutrition provides a home for sports nutritionists, dietitians, and trainers to easily access the most important performance nutrition research, brand innovations, and trade news headlines. Todd also leads 24 Stories Marketing, a content marketing agency working exclusively with natural products, brands, and suppliers. And Todd is also an avid long-distance runner. Todd, welcome to the show. Hey, David. It's good to be here. I'm excited. So as hosts, how many have these you know, are we at number three, four? What are we looking at here? As, as me as a host? Yeah. Uh, this is number three, uh, awesome. four. Great. Gosh, I don't even know. I'll have to go back. Well, you're, doing it. you're doing a great job. They've been exciting. I was secretly hoping that you might change up the format to like a 1980s morning zoo kind of thing where you have, <laughs> you know, crazy sound effects and wacky characters all voiced by you. So if you're oh, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah, I should do. I, I do. I do voice characters in my spare time. That would that would be great. <laughs> All right, next time we're at a trade show, I want to. I want to hear that. <laughs> That's good. I I did fail to mention Todd is a good friend of mine as well. So yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, before we get going, I like to start with some icebreakers. Full disclosure to our listeners, and sorry, Todd, but I do provide you the first question. But the. <laughs> right. Numbers two and three are surprise questions. So here we go. All right, I'm ready. Number one, what was the hardest marathon that you've run since you are an avid long distance runner and you run many marathons? So that's a good question. I think um, there's a couple of ways to interpret it, right? If we're talking about hardest in terms of struggling and not sure if I'll want to give up or not, there's so many to choose from, right? But I think physically the hardest, and this is stepping out of the bounds a little bit because it wasn't a technically an organized marathon, but as you know, David, last uh, last year I ran the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim route. So that's where you start on the, you know, we start on the South Rim. I did it with 10 or so friends. You run down, you run up the to the North Rim, and then you run back down and, and end on the South Rim again. It was about it was about 47 miles. And that was clearly the, the hardest thing I've ever done physically. I mean, it's it's stupid to even call it a run because at the end, walking up in, in the dark at night, you know, that was a death march. But um, hardest, most rewarding thing I've ever done. And it always seems to work that way, right? The things that you work at the hardest are the most rewarding. How long was that instantly? And how, like, as far as time and distance? Now, don't don't cheat and say you ran it in like, Two minutes, you know, we want on. <laughs> That's right. No, I'll be I'll be completely I'll be completely transparent because I think it's kind of a cool story. Like who of our group ended up first? It certainly wasn't me. I was I was middle of the pack as I as I usually always am when I run races, but depending on the route you take, um, it was about 47 miles for me and change, you know, um total. It took me, it was about 17 hours to do that. What's really what I thought was really cool, there's about 10 of us, like I said. The the first person so that it ranged from I think the first people in our group finished in 15 hours so two hours ahead of me and then the last people in our group it was just over 22 hours maybe so it was a wide range as you can imagine stretching out over over that amount of time and that total elevation gain was I think 33,000 feet between the two ascents so it was a lot and it really spreads people out, but it was really cool. The first person to win or to finish, sorry, not that I'm competitive about this at all. <laughs> yeah, not at all, um, not at all. Yeah, right. Was one of my friend, friends in a running group, a female. She won first, which was cool, or came in first, which was cool. The second person was the oldest person in our group. This gentleman who's also in a, a running group, I, I trail run with sometimes. Um, I won't say his age. I don't really know it uh, for sure. Uh, but anyway, really cool to see kind of how that long of a distance really um, some of those traditional things like you think, oh, an older person might not finish or uh, as quickly or whatever. It all evens out. And it's about stamina and willpower at that point, which I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, pure mid pack when it comes to stamina and willpower. Right. How do you mentally prepare for that? Because you can um, physically, I mean, you can run, you know, yeah, physically right. and run th right. different elevations and stuff. But mentally, how do you? I don't know, man. I, I wish someone would have told me. I just kind of, um, I did, you know, I, I practiced for it, but mentally, I, 
I don't know. You just kind of get in. You know, the beauty of the the scenery. I was it was breathtaking. That really helps. And then bringing snacks along. You have to pack everything. And there's water available. The time of year we did it, but you have to bring all your nutrition and you really have to plan out how many calories per hour because you can't you don't want to get stranded down there and so for me it was bringing little treats along right like so um and that just kind of kept me going or i the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich maybe the best sandwich i've ever had in my life was probably around mile 35 i was completely dead at the bottom waiting to go back up or you know took a break waiting to go back to the top it was smashed in a ziploc bag at the bottom of my pack and it was just you know peeling it off the plastic and eating it, it was the best tasting sandwich sandwich I've ever had in my life. And I have to say after that, like you could feel it because you're so drained. You could feel it kick in and, you know, I'm running. Mm. I'm like, man, I feel great. And it was peanut butter and jelly. Oh, wow. So anyway, that's, I guess how I stayed motivated. Food. (laughs) Food. Food motivated. (laughs) You said, you said snacks, like I think of chocolate bars, but that's probably not what. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. It's funny how, so if you run road marathons, you know, I think traditionally, um, you know, it's like those goo packets, you know, yeah, those yeah. and and this is actually a big issue that Move Nutrition is going to be covering here in the next year on one of our quarterly magazines is, you know, endurance um, supplements and, and sports nutrition for endurance, because it's been, I think it's behind the the curve in terms of innovation, you know, people, that's what people do when they run marathons, they still take, you know, some goo packs and drink water or whatever, mm-hmm. ultra running, totally different, you know, if, Road running is the serious, you know, performance side of it. Ultra running feels like the party because you bring, I brought trail mix. I brought some man licorice. I brought candy. I brought, you you need calories and you need something you're excited to eat after so much, you know, so many distance. I did have, you know, I had like, you know, liquid hydration with um, electrolytes and stuff that kept, kept me going calories, but you know. If you go to some of the ultra races, there's crazy th- like bowls of M and M's at the aid stations and stuff. It's it gets <laughs> nice. a little nut. I'm not That's saying my- you always go for those, but right. That's my kind yeah. of snack right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean you have to run whatever 20 miles to get there, but it sure tastes good when you get there. Then it gives you so it gives you a better respect for the old PB and J sandwich now, huh? Doesn't it? Yeah. Oh man, and that sounds good actually right now. <laughs> All right, let's go question two. Um, so you work with brands for videos and other content with 24 stories. Um, yeah. So you're behind the camera, but you also appear on the Natural View podcast with Maggie over at Whole Foods Magazine. Correct. So do you prefer being behind the camera or in front of the camera and why? <laughs> Well, this is audio, so you you know I, I'm clearly suited for either an audio format or being behind the camera. Um, I prefer the, you know, behind the camera aspect, really I not, so, you know, I, I like going out and shooting video. That's fun. And when I, when I started t- 24 stories, I really made a concerted effort to not get in a position where I'm never doing creative work anymore, because I think, you know, so many people in the creative field, they get into that work, they become whatever, a web designer, a writer, whatever. And then as they progress in their career, they find themselves farther and farther away from doing any of that work that they fell in love with at the, you know, at the start. So I carve that out. So I have folks that help on design and writing and things like that. But the video is something I've just said, I'm, I'm keeping this um, so I can stay connected and have a creative outlet. So I love shooting video, but I also love coming back and putting on some music and uh, just editing, right? Just like being in my office um, here and just really telling a story through those videos. So I think that's probably I'm best suited for that <laughs> behind it. Yeah. As you'll, I, as you'll find, as we progress in our discussion, <laughs> you're best suited behind the camera. All right. Question three this is a tough one, right? All right. Is, is a hot dog, a sandwich? <laughs> oh, that's a question I've never, I've never considered. Um, mm-hmm. I think the only way, and, and this is a sensitive topic because, um, you know, I, I spent so many years in Chicago where hot dogs are just mm-hmm. so revered and obviously you can't put ketchup on it, but I think the only way it could be a, a sandwich is if you cut it in half and smash it between a bun and then you can maybe call it a sandwich, but yeah, I'm going to go no. Okay. What's your thought I, that's, on that? That's, like, that's where, I want to know where the motivation for this question came up. Is this something you were like, is this a bet you had with someone and you're trying to get <laughs> confirmation? Uh, actually, Julianne. So uh, Julianne okay. here, Stratum, she came up with it. We we did a little bit of digging. You know, obviously you came from Chicago. You had been in Chicago yeah. or whatever. And then um, just, I don't know, it seemed like 
like a, a fun one. And if you go look, there's a lot of debate about it out there. So really? okay. I, I'm with you though. I don't, it's not a sandwich. Like yeah. it requires, so here, and this was, this is how I explained it when her and I were talking. I think if the bread is separate, so like a hot dog bun, right? It's yeah. together. Yeah. I, you know, I guess sometimes you could pull it apart, but um, for the most part, it's together. So that's why I don't consider it a sandwich. Yeah. And I think just that in terms of there's a hot dog place. I'm from Peoria, Illinois, originally. And there's this hot dog place called Wonder Dog. And it's like the best chili dogs I've ever had in my life. And I crave them when I go back. And so I reserve the hot dog as a special thing that I'll have on special occasions. Like when I go back to Peoria, mm. um, I you know, I couldn't imagine if you went to work every day and they're like, oh, what do you have for lunch? You're like, oh, a sandwich. And it was really hot dogs. That doesn't, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's not kind of pulling a fast one. That's a good one. I, I like that. I like that. So, all right. Well, congratulations. You passed all the icebreakers. So, Ooh, so we can continue. Now we can continue in, into the hard hitting stuff. Let's, uh, yeah, let's jump in. So how long have you worked in and around the natural products industry? Yeah, uh, good question. I think it was 2010 when I my first job was I was hired as the marketing manager at Now Foods, um, which many people may know, a popular supplement company in the industry. So that was my f- first foray into the natural products industry. So what's that like 13 years? You're a seasoned vet then. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned in um, your bio, Mood Nutrition Network. So tell us what is Mood Nutrition and then who is it geared towards? Yeah. uh, So Move Nutrition Network is really the idea behind it is to connect that conversation around sports and active nutrition, um, that conversation that's happening on a number of different levels from academia, you know, researchers doing sports nutrition research to ingredient companies like Stratum uh, brands who are putting out finished goods, and then also sports nutritionists, sports dietitians, and trainers in the gym. There's this whole vertical, you know, ecosphere of people who have an interest in sports and active nutrition. And the idea behind Move Nutrition is to provide a home base for people to come and and get information. And really, ultimately, you know, we're gathering everyone into that conversation, all those levels I've just talked about, but, you know, we're really talking to those folks like dietitians, nutritionists, um, and trainers who deal with consumers every day, people who are in the gyms who are always have questions. I mean, if I go to the gym in the morning, people ask me, they don't even know I'm in the industry, but yet they're like, Hey, uh, how much protein do you take? Uh, you know, and they don't even know what, what I do for a living. It's just this common, you know, people have questions and, and they're willing to research because they're interested in their health. And so if we can bring the best of the sports nutrition industry and bring it into one place where the people who interface with people trying to get healthier through, you know, some sort of activity, then I think we're doing a service to the industry and to those folks who are looking for answers. Um, so that's kind of the idea of that's what it is. That's where it that's where it came from. Awesome. Let's move into then what led you to create Move Nutrition. I think maybe you explained there was a gap. Yeah, that's kind of the big idea behind it, I guess. But I can tell you specifically, like I remember the moment way back when it was maybe tw- end of 2020, I think if I have my years correct, it was during COVID. Our friends at APA had... A, they have a sports nutrition committee uh, led by Rob Wildman, who they do a great job of bringing up sports nutrition issues, talking about them and really trying to move some of those big issues forward in, in the industry. And they had an online APA sports nutrition congress. And as 24 stories, we were helping to produce it. So we were helping to run the Zoom calls, uh, get people, you know, recorded and then, you know, saved out and for their, their big event. As I was doing that, I was sitting there and I was interviewing all of these researchers they had on, you know, professors and and other folks in the industry. And I'd had like 10 or 15 minutes between each call. And so there'd be some downtime and they would get on, we'd do a tech check, whatever. And then I just started talking to them like, hey, so what do you do? And it was fascinating to me, all of these people on that end of the business who are in academia, really doing important research and really passionate about it hearing their stories and I'm like, gosh, you know, there needs to be a bigger platform for these people. There's, there's great outlets like APA. There's the ISSN who features these speakers quite a bit, but where is it day to day you can go? So that started me off on a journey of like, how do you, how do you elevate these voices and really get that information out there and and have it cascade down through all the aspects of this industry? So I did that. And then I spent about two years 
talking to everyone I knew in the sports nutrition industry about, and, and, you know, brands I work with and, you know, like, Hey, where do you get your information? Where do you find sports nutrition information, especially sport, you know, like trainers and dietitians, and then also formulators at brands. And the answer was always the same. It was like, well, there'll be some information here. There might be a podcast here or, or, you know, a webinar, there might be an email that comes out. And what I gathered from it, there's so much good information about it, but it's all kind of spread out. There's some great events and things, but it's, you can find it in, you know, a lot of places or you won't find it because you didn't know about it. So really the goal then was how do you create a platform that brings the best of that together? So you don't have to go looking for it. And you're compiling it all together in one one location. Yeah, we're trying. I mean, we're a startup, so this is this is just launched. So I'm definitely building it incrementally, you know, with the help of uh Lise Lovett, who's uh someone in the sports nutrition industry and in the supplement industry. A lot of folks know who she is. She's great. She's the editor. So we've been working together to kind of build this out and get it launched. So we have big plans for this to kind of continue to grow. Um, and bring in more voices and more of that content. So we're we're starting with something we can we can uh, manage and then build quickly from there. So you guys are you guys are taking a little bit different approach than your average like let's we'll say you know trade publication. So you're going to have more probably more video, more more audio. So can you tell us like a little bit more about what we can expect on this site? Yeah. So I think that's an important point to say we're taking a, a different approach. And there, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is we already have great trade media resources in the industry. We're not for lack of good information out there about sports and active nutrition. So we're by no means a, a trade media organization. We're more about creating this online destination where we can highlight some of the best of those publications and headlines and, and link back to them for people, you know, and provide a little insight, like, hey, here's why you should be paying attention to this story, and then link back to wherever. Um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, some of the other things that will be on the site, we've got some, uh, we have some regular podcasts that will be coming out here shortly. Um, that'll be on a monthly basis to start, and we hope to ramp that up as we get going. And those feature some really well-known people in the sports nutrition industry who have been around a long time, who can provide perspective on some of the latest developments. And then we're doing a newsletter. Actually, this is, uh, we're naming it the ISSN scoop in, in honor of ISSN and what they've done. They had uh, a newsletter a while ago. We're going to partner with them to put that out. And that's going to provide just an easy, you know, in people's inbox, here are five sports nutrition headlines that that we're paying attention to around the industry or outside of the industry and with a little perspective. And then the thing I'm probably most excited about is we're doing the sports nutrition quarterly and it's going to be an online, I'm calling it a digital magazine. It's really, you know, like a standalone site, every that you can link to from movenutritionnetwork.com. But it's going to take a close look at something in the sports nutrition industry, um, a big question, a big topic, and really dive deep on that. So this first one, as we launched, that's available now is women in sports nutrition. The reason why that's been such a, you know, why we wanted to make it our first big issue is that there's all this talk about, you know, it used to be, you know, and it still exists to some extent, but this pink it and shrink it notion of, you know, brands would be like, oh, we need to formulate a uh, supplement for women. Let's just take our formula. Let's put it in a pink bottle. Let's give them a little less and let's charge more because it's specialized and someone will grab that off the shelf. Obviously that's wrong. We wanted to highlight that. And then as we got deeper into it, understanding the lack of research on female populations in sports nutrition, I mean, that's a prevalent problem as we look, if we're going to make sports nutrition and active nutrition products for women, it seems like a no brainer. Women have to be studied leading up to, you know, and, and really doing the, the right science on those products. So that's what this whole issue is about. And we're tackling it from a bunch of different perspectives. Really, if you think about that earlier uh, vertical, you know, line, as far as how the industry goes with researchers all the way down to nutritionists and dietitians, we have everyone represented, um, including Stratum. You, you guys uh, provided some great information there. And, and we have a little, you know, we have uh, several videos and talks with folks. We have some articles, we have some infographics. So it really is this collection of content all serving one big question in this first issue. That's great. And I, it's a great topic that you chose for your kind of your main big launch over these last 
year or two years, you know, there's been a lot of, well, we, we even did a podcast kind of talked about the research that's lacking in women. It used to be the adage was like, oh, if it's good for a man, you know, a woman, it's going to be fine. Or like you said, or throw something pretty pink on it and, yeah. and throw it out there. So, but it's, that's as far as away from the truth as possible. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are touching on that and looking forward to a lot of great uh, information to come out on that. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I will say in that process, um, yeah, I was kind of expected to go in all doom and gloom. Like there's not going to be, you know, any bright spots here, but going through that process of, of talking to so many people and researching the topic, there are some great things happening. So I'm excited to be able to tell those stories too, um, and hopefully keep that momentum in the industry moving along in the right direction. Absolutely. That's great. So yeah, again, very, very much looking forward to it. How can our listeners connect with you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think the easiest way in terms of Move Nutrition is head to our website. It's movenutritionnetwork.com. And there you'll see, that's the network homepage. And right there on the, the front of it, you'll see a link to sign up for the digital magazine, the quarterly, and also gain access to it. And then also to register for the newsletter you can get. That'd probably be the easiest way. Awesome. Sounds good. Todd, I appreciate you coming on the show. Again, as a friend in the industry, appreciate you. Appreciate everything you're doing at 24 Stories, uh, everything you're going to be doing for Move Nutrition. And we're excited to partner with you along the way. Yeah, I really appreciate your support on it and and everything you've contributed to you know helping get this off the ground. And yeah, appreciate you guys too. I can't wait to come back down to Carthage. I think we, one night at Supply Side West, we were making plans about um, climbing the stairs in the Capitol building, right? Like we yeah, got so to the, make that happen. The courthouse building here. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, it's not a, maybe it's a five-story building. I don't know how many stories are. My wife works there, but you can actually climb these rickety stairs all the way up to the very, very tip top and then kind of peer out the window. So Let's yeah, do it. I it, think, think it'd be great. I think so too. What if, if we can make this happen at one point, I, here's what I promise. I'll get a couple, I'll make two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I'll <laughs> smash the heck out of them, put them in the bottom of a pack. And I swear it's going to be the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich you've ever tasted. I am in buddy. That sounds amazing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. It was fun. All right, buddy. Yeah. We'll talk to you later. Hey,